Hello everybody, Rob Walker's Vinyl Tech 2024 response. So this is my contribution, despite the fact that I have not made many uh, VC-oriented videos last year, probably only one or two. So maybe I forfeit my right to make those videos now, but I still do it anyway. Um, so I printed out the 20 questions. Some of them were actually pretty interesting and uh, some of them I as usual I can't answer all of them sometimes these questions have a kind of a trajectory that uh, I just cannot wrap my brain around <laughs> we'll get there um, so uh, let me begin favorite record you purchased in 2023 probably uh, Correlations by Ashra and uh, let me mention two albums the other one is on CD this is Köckler or in English Roots by Baba Zula. This is a Baba Zula's album that came out like 10 years ago and I would say it's a little bit different than the previous album and the following one. It kind of sticks out as a kind of a little bit of a unique project where they uh, tap kind of deeper into more traditional Turkish music uh, but still with this uh, beautiful sort of psychedelic Anadolu vibe that they have. Um, and um, I love the sound of this album. It has beautiful, beautiful sort of acoustic atmosphere. You kind of feel like you are in some room surrounded by these musicians. Yeah, and I mean, Correlations. It's a wonderful, wonderful record. A brilliant uh, 70s album. A spin-off, basically, of Ashra Temple. Um, or, if you, if you like, uh, more in the direction of a Manuel Göttingh solo album. Love this record. Great stuff. So... Let me continue. Uh, the last record you bought in 2023, the very last record I bought in 2023, is uh, Mazala Africa. But Mazala is, of course, just a moniker or, or a uh, pseudonym of, of uh, Piero Emiliani. So this is a 70s uh, kind of experimental, somewhere between experimental music and library music, uh, but of course thematically. Uh, dealing uh, with uh, ideas surrounding Africa, uh, but uh, by large this is a kind of a proto-ambient electronic album, if you, if you will. So, uh, a band or a singer who released two or more albums in the same year. Well, there are some of those. I just stick to the most obvious choice. Uh, 1971, my birth year. In the spring, the Yes album. In the autumn, Fragile. It's not a bad load for a, for a band. <laughs> These two albums within one year. So, uh, okay, if you could listen... If you could only listen to music from one decade, which decade would you choose? This is very simple, 70s. It's not even something I would spend more than one second thinking about. Show a record by a band or singer from Manchester. Simply read. Um, which band or singer did you listen to the most in 2023? Probably, uh, I would say probably uh, Soft Machine. Um, mostly Soft Machine 5. And... Soft Machine 6, uh, those all on CD, but uh, also Soft Machine 7 actually. And yeah, I mean, if I if I have the stamina, then I listen to third and fourth as well. And uh, yeah, and uh, of course I do throw bundles now and then into the mix. Um, 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 um show show seven. 7-inch records. Well, what a task. I thought if I'm gonna go into my 7 inches box, then I should definitely confront you with some insane uh, projects and deep cuts. So um, uh, let's begin here. Okay, so this is uh, Hydrophobia by Contagious Orgasm, which is a uh, Japanese uh, industrial band. Um, this came out on our music label back in the day. 
Uh, same goes for Night by the Gero Gary Gegege. Sort of a mad Japanese uh, noise project. Uh, again, came out on Antzen. Um, this was kind of very limited edition. I mean, I had a lot of work with this because it has this giant booklet and back in the day this was all kind of difficult to make. Uh, it's not like today. <laughs> so, um, let's stick with the Gero Gary Gegege. This is uh, the uh, Sensory Monkey Metal Action. 7-inch. Um, um, leave it to Gero Gary Gegege to put 20 tracks on this 7-inch. <laughs> which tells you a lot about this band. Um, and this is Kitanomaru Hiyake by the Gero Gary Gegege. And uh, here's something from the early days of uh, Industrial, which is a uh, new vagina for mice by Mersbau. So this is Masami Akita, um, kind of one of the godfathers of Japanese noise music. Um, that's probably worth something now. Um, now this is kind of a classic, uh, classic uh, seven-inch, uh, and a lot of people may have this have this one in their collection. Warm Leatherette by The Normal, uh, kind of the birth moment of Mute Records. Um, and this one is kind of a funny, funny little nugget. This is a Kate Bush 7 inch featuring her recordings of Rocket Man and Candle in the Wind by Elton John. Um, and uh, if you take out the 7 inch, the cover unfolds into a glorious uh, Kate poster. Yeah, so those were the days. Um, all right, so those were the seven inches, huh? Whew. Now, uh, question number eight. Who is coming to your party? Choose four music-related people to come to an ima imaginary dinner party, past or present, who would you invite? So people who are already dead are possible, right? Um, <clears throat> so I would invite um, Giorgio Gomelski, John Hassel, Frank Zappa, and Alan Holdsworth. Um, which would be probably pretty interesting. I think only Alan Holdsworth is the only one of them who's kind of a, who was probably a little bit on the heavy side with the beer drinking. The others, I don't know. <laughs> I don't drink myself, so um, I was not looking for some party animals <laughs> in my choices here. I just thought these four people in the same room would be something if I had a tape of that. Yeah, I could sell that. At least to crazy people. Um, 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 yeah, question number nine. We lost them. Choose one musician who passed away in 2023. Well, as a matter of fact, one of the greatest passed away in 2023. Sakamoto Ryuichi. So um, this is uh, probably for me like the most uh, tangible loss, um, musically speaking, because um, I'm pretty sure uh, he had uh, still a lot of interesting ideas in him. And you know, you know what they say about uh, the human race, right? The great people never last and an asshole like Henry Kissinger lives 101 years so um whatever um imagine uh you could only listen to music from one country um and which country would that be well with my musical taste to stay on the to stay on the safe side uh i would probably say uk but if I had the access, the money, or just an unlimited access, and I could basically immerse myself into this world, then I, I could keep myself busy for a couple of decades with music from Japan only. Believe me, it's there. <laughs> it's just once you, once you uh, collect Japanese music from Europe, you better start robbing banks or something. <laughs> so, um, that's a tricky question. Uh, name three vinyl community channels you discovered in 2023. 
I can't, I cannot do that because uh, again, I didn't pay that much attention this whole year. Um, uh, um, and um, but what I can tell you is the one channel I discovered and uh, certainly spent significant time uh, watching his videos is uh, Murdoch's Music Minute which is a um, guy also from Germany and um, he does some of his videos in German like me and some of his videos in English but I think he could definitely need some uh, subscriptions so um, go there and push the button um, show a record you bought when you were a teenager Eve by the Alan Parsons project Uh, show a funk or soul record. I show you one of the most beautiful one. Nino and Radaya by Nino Ferrer. That's soulful and funky as well. So it's kind of both. Um, ma, ma, ma. Show a record you think everyone has and then show a record you think nobody has. Well, I kind of... I looked for a solution uh, that does not include me showing Dark Side of the Moon. So I came with this one. Whipped Cream and Other Delights by Herb Alpert. Isn't this this kind of album that sticks in every collection on this planet? I think they are still printing this shit. It's un quite unbelievable. I mean, you still find it in every single thrift store on this planet and still there are some reissues made of this. <laughs> um, and the uh, record that nobody has. Well, I don't know if that is true, but let's test it. Mortal Genesis by six come um that is a sort of british underground album from 80s it's more, it's more like an ep it's not very long i think this is from 1987 or 88 when this came out um it's kind of a spin-off project from death in june as a matter of fact um ma, 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 what do we have here ah yeah She's great. A record by a female artist you bought in 2023. Well, probably the nicest uh, album I bought by a female artist last year was uh, Anadolu Ejderi by Gaia Suakyo, her latest album. It's a great artist, singer, producer, composer from uh, Istanbul. Um, great vocalist, wonderful singer, very whimsical, very inventive. And um, each of her, she, she, did, she did four albums until now and uh, all of them are quite exciting and amazing um show me a record you'd describe oh no no I, I i i skipped one the favorite video you posted on your channel in 2023 and the favorite video you watched on the vc in 20 i i cannot answer that this it's one of those this is one of those questions that have a tendency to break my brain so we skip that 17. Show me a record you'd describe as a 90s classic. That's kind of funny for a particular reason because um, I went on record many times saying that I kind of hate the 90s and musically the 90s feel to me kind of like early symptoms of AIDS and uh, so I kind of can't really relate to the question but that being said I have a kind of lot of records from the 90s and it's mostly it's like house and techno and stuff like that. So I picked two albums from the 90s and uh, one of them is of course Dummy by Portishead and the other one is Psychic Karaoke by Transglobal Underground and um, yeah for me two albums that kind of represent the better side of the 90s um, so uh, if if I could walk into the cover look through your collection ah Okay, if I could walk into the cover, look through a collection and choose a record cover you'd like to be part of. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, kind of slightly, slightly creepy question, right? <laughs> so, um, basically a cover, I mean, I could have picked like a Roger Dean cover, right? With these beautiful kind of landscapes, fantasy and so on. But I thought, I thought I go even more into the atmospheric and pick two covers as a matter of fact which uh, would be so lovely to enter a few first of the first of all it's uh, the waking hour by dallas carr which of course has this famous maxwell parish uh, painting as a 
gate full sleeve so you can actually open it and has more or less the entire painting here so um who wouldn't who wouldn't but the other one because um i like this kind of escapistic adventurous atmosphere it's five miles out by mike oldfield which has a uh, this this too is a painting actually um, by gerald Corson. And uh, it's a very kind of a naive uh, painting, but um, I just love this adventurous, kind of a Biggles type of atmosphere. And uh, this may not be particularly my favorite Mike Oldfield album, but it's one of my favorite covers, as a matter of fact. So um, I think this is a lovely one. Anyway, um, we are almost through here, right? Uh, oh, yeah. 19. It's like a greatest hits. Show me a record you are so familiar with that it feels like a greatest hits album. I don't feel like that about albums, honestly. I mean, it's kind of because those those albums that I'm really very familiar with are usually some albums that are kind of weird with like three tracks on it and each one of each one of these tracks is like 15 minutes long. So that's not something that will make you feel like you're listening to a kind of best of album. But I, I understand, I understand what Rob Walker is asking here. So the one album I could probably show you that has this kind of a uh, compilational best of vibe, despite being actually the debut album of this artist, is uh, Easy Listening by Towa Tei. And uh, as a Japanese artist, he is a former member of D-Light, you probably remember delight this kind of a dancey bubblegum phenomenon from the early 90s so this is a wonderful brilliant kind of a bossa nova and uh, jazz funk uh, influenced album and uh, it's pretty brilliant never really figured out which part of this of the sleeve here is actually the cover i think i think that is the cover picture as a matter of fact ryuichi sakamoto is playing on here um, I think I think Bebe Gilberto is singing here. So this this is a wonderful album from beginning to the end. It's completely addictive. I mean, we've been listening so much to this when we were young. <sighs> so uh, and twenty, show me an album that was released in nineteen seventy four. So what's so special about nineteen seventy four? Is this, I don't know, is this the birth year of Rob Walker or or just because it's 2024, so it's basically like 50 years ago, I guess. Um, 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 I, I remember picking three albums for this, so let me just find them. Oh yes, three albums from 1974. First of all, self-titled Refugee, kind of the nice spin-off band with Patrick Moratz. Um, then you have uh, the uh, Electronic Turkiler by Erkin Koray, uh, one of the big godfathers of Anadolu rock from of, of Turkish uh, rock music. Um, yeah, and coincidentally, also someone who died last year. So uh, this has kind of a double meaning here. Well, this is a nice reissue on faraway sounds. And finally. Also from 1974 is Meditation by Eberhard Schöner, an album uh, that sounds exactly as the title suggests. <laughs> um, and uh, that was it. I made it. And it was pretty quick. Take care. And um, I have to put all these records back on the shelf and um, see you. <laughs>